Okay, welcome back to Mr. Hassan's math channel. I'm now going to be going through um, the Solomon paper for P1 of um, Solomon C, Pure Mathematics 1 at Excel. This is a Solomon collection. This is uh, called uh, the C paper for Solomon's. And it's question number six from this paper, which also corresponds to question number three for my end of topic worksheet. Um, number two which is quadratics okay so this is a question where we have um, this f of x equals x to the power of three over two minus eight x to the power of minus a half we've got to evaluate f3 giving your answer in its simplest form with a rational denominator so basically when it says evaluate f3 that means replace the x in the function with a three so the x is replaced with a three that's what it's asking us to do so what i'm going to do is i'm going to first I'm going to first re rewrite the equation in um, root form instead of index form. So something to the power of 3 over 2. Okay, the numerator is the power, so this is x to the power of 3. And the denominator is the root, so this means the square root. I don't have to write a 2 here. That means there's a 2 there. Square root of x to the power of 3 minus, and this means 8 over x to the power of a half. And x to the power of a half is the square root of x. Writing in this form just makes it easy for us when we substitute values in. So I've got to put 3 inside this function. So I'm going to get the square root of 3 cubed minus 8 over the square root of 3. And we have to write this in its simplest form with a rational denominator. So let's just... Now the square root of, of 3 cubed is like... You can think of it as the square root of 3 squared times 3. I've written it as like the squared term separately minus and this i'm going to rationalize the denominator of this because i want the denominator to be rational so i'll multiply the denominator by root three therefore i multiply the numerator by root three that will cause the denominator to become a rational number become three okay now so this is going to give me um, of course the square root of three squared is three so you have three times root three okay that's three times root three minus and you're going to have eight times root 3 over 3 and there we have the answer okay this is with a rational denominator we can leave it like this if we wish if we want to make it one fraction we could but this is perfectly fine if i wanted to make it one fraction i could do i could do that this would be 9 root 3 minus 8 root 3 over 3 in fact i should this is not actually my answer i should simplify because this can be simplified um, you know, so you can actually add these together as as like fractions. So you're going to end up with um, 9 root 3 minus 8 root 3, which is root 3. So you end up with root 3 over 3 as your final answer. Okay, so what I said just a minute ago, of course, that's not correct in terms of I can't leave it like this because these are like terms. This is 3 root 3 minus 8 over 3 root 3. So I, I made the denominators the same so I can add them together. This is 9 root 3 minus 8 root 3, which is root 3 over 3, 1 root 3 over 3. So there's the answer. So that's we must simplify from this stage. Okay, you can't leave it as it, as it, as it is here because it's not simplified. So there we have the answer in the simplest form with a rational denominator. And that's the answer to part A. And for part B, it says... Solve the equation f of x equals 0, giving your answer in the form k root 2. So now we've got to take this equation, which is x to the power of 3 over 2. And you're going to have minus 8 x to the power of negative 1 half equals 0. So I have to solve this equation. So what I'm going to do first, I'm going to write this um, in the denominator as a positive power. Okay, now... And the next thing I'll do is I'll get rid of the fractions. Whenever you have a, an equation to solve and you, know, you have something like this, you can multiply both sides by the LCM of the denominators in order to rid yourself of the fraction. So if I multiply everything by x to the power of a half, what I'm going to get is x to the power of 3 over 2 times x to the power of a half. So I have to add the powers. Okay, I have to add the powers. If I multiply by x to the power of a half, it will be x to the power of 3 over 2 plus a half. Okay, and if I multiply this by x to the power of a half, I'm left with 8 because they cancel out. And if I multiply 0 by x to the power of a half, I'm left with 0. So this gives me x to the power of 4 over 2, which is x squared. So I've got x squared minus 8 equals 0. 
So I can say x squared is equal to 8. So therefore, I can say x is equal to plus or minus the square root of 8. Okay, plus or minus the square root of 8. Now, what does it say in the question? Does it say anything about this? Um, yeah. Okay, so x equals plus or minus the square root of 8. Now, we're going to get our answer as in the form k root 2. Okay, so you end up with x equals. Now, the square root, we're going to, of course, take out the perfect square from here. So you have plus or minus. This is going to be the square root of 4 times the square root of 2. So this is what it will be, plus or minus 2 root 2. Okay, now, in this particular question, I see there's a little issue. Okay, and the issue is this. Okay, um, it says give your answers in the form k root 2. But I see that there's a little issue with this. Because in the original equation, what this means is this means the square root of x cubed, as we said before, minus 8 over the square root of x. Okay, and if I put, for example, a negative uh, root 2 into, here, into this, either of these, put negative root 2, uh, negative root 2, 2 root 2 into here, I'm going to have to find the square root of a negative number. And if you did that, it's undefined. And even if you, for example, if I showed you on the calculator, okay, for example, if I put negative 2 root 2 under this square root. So I have square root of negative 2 root 2. This will end up giving you something which is undefined. Okay, and if I do, even if I did 8 over, and I have the square root of negative 2 root 2, again, I'll get something which is undefined. All right, so it's something which, um, you know, it says give your answers. And in the, in the mark scheme for this particular paper, it gives, gives two answers, plus or minus 2 root 2. But I think the answer must be x equals 2 root 2 only because you cannot put a negative value, um, you know, into these, into these places here because you, you can't find the square root of a negative value. So really, in the beginning, the question should mention that x is greater than or equal to 0. Okay, for it to be a function, because this, this actually means, you know, the square root of x cubed minus 8 over the square root of x. That's what the actual function is. And that won't be defined for negative values of x, because you can't have a negative, the square root of a negative number. Okay, so there's a something with this question which is a bit uh, iffy there. It should mention that, and your answer should only be the positive square root of 2 times root 2. Okay, that's what I feel, um, and I think that that's the correct uh, way to proceed. Okay, so it should say, give your answer, really, not answers. So that's the answer to question number six from Solomon C, and which corresponds to question three from my worksheet, endotopic worksheet number two on quadratics. Um, thank you for watching. Other questions you'll find on from this Solomon C paper, once I've answered them, will be in the playlist which will appear over here. Other questions on this topic of quadratics from uh, P, P1 will be found in this playlist over here. You can subscribe to the channel from this um, icon over here. And I'll put some other P1 material on the card on the top here. So um, um, thank you for watching. And I'll see you again in another video.